Alright, so today I'm going to talk about the chain rule for real valued functions, and I'll also introduce an alternative definition of the derivative that will make it a little bit easier in proving the chain rule. Anyways, let's get on to the video. So throughout this video, we're going to let uh, f and g be functions from some closed interval a, b to the real numbers. And we're going to introduce this alternative definition of the derivative, uh, which is sometimes called the um, linear approximation uh, definition of the derivative. And basically, uh, it's stated as follows. Um, so a the function f is going to be differentiable at x, if and only if. So we're going to prove, uh, using the old definition of the derivative, that this will this idea of the derivative is going to be equivalent to this next thing, which is that there's going to exist some number, which we'll suggestively called f prime of x, in the real numbers, and some function uh, epsilon uh, that goes from that closed interval a, b to the real numbers such that epsilon of t tends to zero as t tends to x. And with this number and this function, we have the following equality for all t in that uh, closed interval. So Basically, the difference quotient, this is the difference quotient, right here on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side, we have our value of the derivative, and then our function epsilon, which I'll commonly call an error function, uh, because basically, it's going to give you the error between the difference quotient. So geometrically, the secant line, uh, the slope of the secant. And then this is, as we know from like a calculus one course, the derivative represents the tangent line at a point. So essentially, for functions which are differentiable at a point, the secant line is this is kind of hand waving but close to the tangent line uh, for values of epsilon ah my bad for values of t close to x so your error of the tangent line uh, your approximation of the tangent line uh, gets better and better with um, values of t closer to x and that uh, kind of intuition is embodied in this part right here. Our error term uh, goes to zero as we get closer and closer to x. So since we're claiming that this is an alternative definition, uh, we better prove both implications. Um, if we're introducing an alternative definition, you need to take the old one and then show both implications. So for the forward direction, we get to assume that f is differentiable in the old sense of the term. Um, so since it's differentiable at x, f prime of x exists. And then we're going to define our error function uh, that goes from that closed interval to r by this right here. So we have the difference quotient minus the derivative at x. And then, so in this implication, um, there's kind of a lot going on. So first off, we have to find some number f prime of x in the real numbers and some error function with this property that gives me that equality. So I'm going to claim that f prime of x will do the job, uh, but we need to verify that our error function goes to zero as t goes to x. So this part right here is just checking that fact. If we let t go to x 
in our definition of the error function right here, what we have is that it's the limit as t goes to x of <coughs> this uh, difference right here. So because uh, we know f is differentiable at x, uh, this part right here is just f prime of x. And then the limit as t goes to x of f prime of x is, well, there's not a t in there, it's just a constant, it's an actual real number. Um, this is just f prime of x. So we can use the algebraic limit theorem and compute this limit to be f prime of x minus f prime of x, which is zero. So as t goes to x, our error function goes to zero. And then to uh, complete the forward implication, uh, we just check that f prime of x plus our error function is equal to this, which isn't that bad at all, because we pick uh, our error function in this way so that f prime of x plus the error function, which is right here, our difference quotient minus the derivative. So we plug that into here. The difference quotient minus the derivative is right here. This cancels with this, and we're left with just the difference quotient, which is what we needed, because we needed this and this to be equal. So that's all we have for the forward implication. Now we can tackle the backwards implication. And the backwards implication is actually quite a bit easier. Uh, if we just let uh, t go to x in um, the equality right here, because by the hypothesis, uh, f prime of x plus the error function equals the difference quotient. So, whenever we take the limit as t tends to x of this right-hand side right here, well, by the hypothesis, as t goes to x, our error function goes to zero. And then limit as t goes to x of this part right here is just f prime of x. So as t goes to x, um, this entire thing right here just goes to f prime of x. So we had the limit, so this left hand side, the limit as t tends to x of the difference quotient does equal some number f prime of x. So f must be differentiable at x. And that's all we need to do for that. So the two, dif um, two different definitions uh, differentiability are actually the exact same. <clears throat> so now we're going to use uh, that new definition of the derivative to prove the chain rule. And the chain rule um, in calculus one you kind of just know how to use it uh, but to properly define it uh, we're going to say uh, if f uh, is differentiable at x and g is differentiable at f of x then g composed with f at x is differentiable at x and it's equal to the thing we all know and love uh, g prime of f of x times f prime of x and the reason that we can't use uh, kind of like um, maybe like the obvious proof of kind of just taking this difference quotient right here. So this g of f of t minus g of f of x over t minus x, and then kind of like dividing and multiplying by this, uh, because you might think, oh, this thing on the left is g prime of f of x, um, and this right here is f prime of x uh, in the limit as t tends to x. Uh, that doesn't quite work because this thing right here, uh, we can't have equal to zero. And
and there is kind of a way to work uh, work around this, uh, but it requires some uh, modifications. So it's actually just simpler uh, to use that linear approximation uh, of the derivative, as we'll see. So now we're going to finally prove the chain rule using that alternative definition of the derivative. Um, so for all t in that closed interval a b and s in the image of that closed interval uh, we're going to have the following equalities um, so f of t minus f of x is going to be equal to t minus x times uh, this is just the bottom uh, part of that difference quotient just doing algebraic manipulation, uh, multiplying by t minus x in the definition of the derivative, uh, times that number f prime of x plus, um, since we're going to have two error functions, one for each uh, derivative, uh, plus the first error function one of t. And then just to keep in mind, uh, in the limit, as t tends to x, that error function um, goes to zero. And then secondly, since g is differentiable at f of x, we have g of s minus g of f of x should be equal to s minus f of x times g prime of f of x plus our second error function. And just like that first error function, um, in the limit, as s tends to f of x, the error function goes to zero. So this goes to zero as s tends to f of x. And this goes to zero, that epsilon one of t goes to zero as t tends to x. That's gonna be very important in a little bit. So this equality right here holds for any s in the image of a, b. So if we let s equal f of t in this equation right here and substitute um, this so this left hand side appears right here when we let s equal f of t um, we're going to be able to substitute this which is equal to this into this equation right here So I'll just write that all out now. Remember we've got on the left hand side g of s minus g of f of x. So g of f of t minus g of f of x should be equal to s minus f of x. So f of t minus f of x times and then g prime of f of x plus epsilon, our second epsilon, uh, of f of t and then now is when we substitute f of t minus f of x which is right here and right here and it's going to be equal to t minus x which is right here times this thing right here so times f prime of x plus epsilon 1 of t times just that right hand part times g prime of f of x plus epsilon 2 of f of t and if we divide by t minus x we get the difference quotient of uh, g composed of f composed with f at x 
on this left hand side and this part goes on the right hand side and so this doesn't look like it's helped that much it looks like we've just kind of made a mess however uh, since f must be continuous at x because remember if it's differentiable at a point it must be continuous at that same exact point then f of t better tend to f of x as t tends to x that's um, one of the results of continuity um, <clears throat> so whenever we let t tend to x in this expression right here it'll simplify quite a bit so whenever we let t tend to x on this left hand side we get g composed of f prime at x and now we need to deal with this part so here we'll be able to use the algebraic limit theorem and the limit as t tends to f at t tends to x of this part right here well f prime of x is going to be f prime of x because uh, it's not a function of t or anything like that and then we have plus epsilon 1 of t well remember from earlier we said this tends to 0 as t tends to x so this will tend to f prime of x plus 0 which is going to go right here and now all that's left is this term right here so g prime of f of x well that's just a constant that's just a number um, so that's what it will tend to whenever t tends to x and then the second part remember by the continuity at x um, we have f of t tends to f of x and remember the special property of epsilon 2 it's going to tend to 0 whenever our input tends to f of x which is exactly what we have here so this will tend to this entire expression right here will tend to g prime of f of x plus 0 so both the epsilon uh, both of the error functions tend to zero and then that just ends up right here so there we have it uh, that's all you got to do to prove the chain rule um, and like I said there is an alternative proof uh, using the other method that I mentioned earlier uh, but this is a little bit nicer way to do it and Alright, that's all I got for this video. Subscribe if you want to see more, leave a like if you enjoyed, and comment if you have any questions.